Right, let's get started. So we thought we'd do is go through a couple of slides, there's not loads, just to cover off a few basics, and then we thought we could have a bit more of a discussion mm -hmm. around some of the things we cover off in the slides, or if you've got any questions or thoughts you want to discuss, we can do that. Um, so yeah, we're going to try not to do... Hey, Mike, how's it going? Hi. Um, so we're going to try not to do uh, Death by Power. Yeah, cool. So I guess I mean I, I guess I think everybody knows who we are. Simon and Ben. There's a well. few few new faces. Yes. Yeah. One Phil. Um, yeah. Yeah. Should, should we do a quick? Yeah. <laughs> you do it. Go for it. Go oh, for it. All right. right. Should we start with you, Mike? What? <laughs> 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 One of the last photographers, designers. Um. Yeah. The white boy downstairs doing design and photography. Good stuff. And Jason. What yeah. do you do, Jason? I do, I do design as well. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, I'm Rosie and I am Rude Yep. Nice. I'm Sam, I've got a boring day job, but I've got an Amazon business, so I'm trying to ditch the boring day job. I'm Alex. I'm Phil, I do I design more than anything, I suppose, really, but um, pretty much all in education and learning environments, so I kind of help um, organisations find learning platforms. Help. I do a lot of work in helping um, young people move from education to careers and things like that as well. So. Interesting. It, it's, has Khan Academy come up on your radar? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 It's uh, quite impressive what they've done very quickly. Yeah. 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 Nice. Julie Moore, Sales Consulting Solutions. That's what it says on the tin. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm, uh, I'm Bello. Um, we both work for a company called Global Labs in the States. It's um, a tech company. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Bellows. <laughs> Bellows. <laughs> Bellows. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a creative director technically, but design. Yeah. Cool. cool. Awesome. Oh, yes. I'm Ben Simon from Palo Digital. Um, we've been running a digital marketing agency since the dawn of the internet <laughs> in terms of 2003, basically. So before the internet was cool. Um, we once got laughed at a meeting because we suggested to the guy who was buying a website, he didn't have a computer, so he's like, well, how am I going to know when you build the website? So we said we'd print it off to him and send it to him. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, but this internet thing's not going to stick around, is it? This is just like a fad. And we were like, no, no, no it's definitely going to be around. But like, one day you would be able to like, go onto the supermarket website and order your shopping and they'll deliver it to your house. And he just laughed and said, no, I'm not buying it and kicked us out of the room. <laughs> so, um, yeah, turns out it was... It was a bit more than a fact. It was a thing, it caught on. It did, mm. it did. So the other thing, sort of elephant in the room we wanted to address is that this is probably the third or fourth time that AI has been the next big thing. So one thing we'll kind of get to like in the slides, I guess, is that a lot of the tech behind AI isn't necessarily new. It's just that there's suddenly public facing tools that we can interface with that have changed what we're able to do in terms of the interaction with AI. We'll cover a bit more of that off in a minute. Um, and the other thing is, all that's really happened is companies have just given it an absolute shitload of data, like beyond comprehension levels of data and all of the computing power to train it. So Microsoft may or may not have overspecced maybe slightly their cloud capacity, went big a bit early, so had lots of data centers sitting there doing nothing. And then we're like, oh, you're looking for data centers that are sitting there doing nothing. We've got loads of that. So that's kind of how they've managed to get ahead so quick in one of the ways is by just people not quite uploading as much to the Azure cloud as they had anticipated. Um, but yes, let's kind of let's, let's get started. Um, so we'll start off with a, a definition, why not? Um, thanks to the Infinite Monkey and the occasional know we love a definition. So artificial intelligence essentially is just a bit of computer science that makes computers act and think in a bit more of a human way. So as I said, it's, it's all about the data they have access to, the kind of things we're using behind the scenes are fairly rudimentary actually, but what it has access to is really the key. So some people say, well, artificial intelligence isn't very artificial and it isn't very intelligent, which I have heard mentioned a couple of times. The artificial bit is often seen as artificial because people still think that humans made the code that's inside it, but they didn't. 
the, the code that is within these models is made by the model itself. So it is artificial in the sense that we can't replicate it and we can't understand how it works. And the intelligence bit is, I guess, your perception of what you think intelligence is. So it, it is purely your judgment of the outcome. So like some humans, the output is not always perfect and you don't always agree with it. So I would always counter the artificial intelligence in either of those things with that argument. Um, we've already been using AI for ages. Everything you see and do on a social media app and the reason that you unlock your phone around 30 times a day to check if Instagram is still installed is because AI is telling you to do it. Everything you see, every finger movement, every up, down, sort of this way, or click, watch, watch again, search, is all logged in in an AI algorithm, has been for years. Um, getting directions is another one that people don't realise is an enormous amount of aggregated data combined together. Um, that's probably the one thing that Google Maps has over basically everything else, is it's just enormous amounts of GPS data to make that work. Um, translation apps, this has been a big one. So these language models, obviously, we're using them in English, but they are available in a number of languages, not nearly enough languages, but a lot of languages, and a lot of that comes from translation apps. Um, huge data sets there. Mm. With the new um, Google Pixel Buds, you can use those like almost like Star Trek Universal translators, you can be in Spain with it in your ear and it'll be listening in real time, translating it and then telling you. Dictation apps. So if you've used otter.ai or Descript, you'll know that this is great if you sound like you're from California, <laughs> but really shit if you're from Yorkshire. Um, there's an amazing one of someone with a Welsh accent trying to use Otter AI and she may as well just be going, oh, blah, 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 blah. it's really funny. Um, the other thing that we've been, uh, we'll just do this one, sorry. content recommendations, music and video, and the people also bought um, is sort of like, oh, people who like this also like that. It's massive AI models of, and Amazon is the leader in this, of mm -hmm. the, you know, scanning all of your purchase histories, credit card details, mapping you across multiple accounts and all this sort of stuff to come up with the thing they reckon they can sell you at the highest margin at that time. And it's, it's phenomenally complicated, but basically AI has been around for ages. It's just that because we haven't had a fun, sexy, curious interface in order to do anything with it, we've not called it AI. Um, we've actually been training AI for a long, long, long time. Um, people won't, won't remember these, the old school captures. So this is, and we have my notes and then dug out. Oh, yeah. By 2011, Google's recapture, this one, had finished digitizing the entire Google Books archive, as well as 13 million articles from the New York Times back catalog dating back to 1851. So every time you were typing in the text, you were essentially training the AI's visual tech in order to tell it what it was reading and whether it was right or whether it was wrong. So we've kind of progressed from, from words into signs, numbers on yeah. buildings. I'm seeing a lot of cats on t-shirts these days. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so we've also talked into drive which is hilarious. So a lot of people think that this is just from Google Street View, but these are actually from the cameras within the cars. And the cars reckon, spot things and say, I don't know what this is. And then humans say, well, that's a parking sign, but obviously we need that scale. So the only way to do that has been with capture. Um, the thing will, the other thing that I haven't, there isn't a graphic for, but essentially Google bought this enormous data set of call center recordings, not of what people in the customers were saying, but what the sales reps and the people in the call center, because they're all reading off scripts. So you've got thousands of people saying the same thing over and over again with the text that they're supposed to be saying. Hmm. And that's how it trained voice recognition models. 
and they bought that from all over the world. So obviously that had, had different bits stripped out, like the company, you know, can you tell me your credit card number, all that sort of thing. But it's really fascinating to think that actually these models have been working for a long time behind the scenes. And that's why speech recognition is very good with certain accents and not others, because <clears throat> you don't always pick strong regional accents to base a call centre in. Um, except in the UK where you really do get some absolutely, <laughs> absolutely wonderful. So the, the evolution of recapture is now we're teaching it how humans use websites. So Google's now switched to like an invisible recapture um, as is uh, Cloudflare and Stripe. So that's actually analysing how a legit human uses a website or makes a purchase. So we're seeing less and less of these click boxes and what the words, but now it's analysing how you've used the websites so machines will be able to spot the bot yeah. kind of uh, doing it autonomously versus natural human. Because it's tracking mouse behaviour, so it's watching your mouse, it looks, what you type in, <clears throat> it knows how, what your screen size is, it knows all these different elements of uh, the, what's going on. So, the next thing to bear in mind is that there's AI, which is artificial intelligence, and then there's what a lot of people think AI should be, which is artificial general intelligence. So this is like the next level up, basically. Um, <clears throat> so the key here is that the ability to understand, learn, and apply knowledge. So at the moment, it can understand and learn artificial intelligence, but it can't apply that knowledge either back to itself or to the output it's making. So I think that's a key distinction. Um, and we'll know when we reach this point when essentially it can do a range of just normal tasks equal or beyond human capabilities. And it does feel sometimes like we're not too far away from that, to be honest. There's definitely little sparks or glimmers of, of ADI. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, and I think there's, there's a couple of things I've read recently where people have spoken about, okay, well, AI is okay at making these illustrations and it can make like paintings and blah, blah, blah. But then you've also got text over here and then you've also got visual recognition, you've got facial recognition. And what will happen is all of those will combine together into one enormous model that is then AGI. So it's like teaching a kid to read and teaching a kid to ride a bike. They're two very distinct skills, and you probably wouldn't ever do both at the same time. But you can do both things. Mm -hmm. You just use them in different applications. So at the moment, we have to go to different tools to do different things, but eventually we'll get to the point where we are in one tool. Um, so some examples of things that AI is really good at. So it's good at thinking and acting faster than humans can in response to quite detailed questions. Basically, it can Google faster than you can, I guess, is the, is the thing there. Um, it's really good at sharing what it's learned. Um, it takes humans a long time to do that, um, because you either have to write a book about it, or you have to make a blog about it, or a YouTube video about it, and that takes ages. Um, obviously, as I just said, we've got these text tools, images, and we can go through a few examples if people want some of these afterwards. Um, Synthesised voices, instruments and videos, uh, this has also been sort of called deep fakes. I don't know if you've ever seen any of these, mm. they are phenomenally good. Yeah. I don't know if you saw um, one on LinkedIn the other day of Bill Gates talking to Socrates. <laughs> that was <laughs> incredible. Because he's wrong. Arm short in the hills are alive. Yeah, nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, oh yeah, there you go, there you go. <laughs> the synthesising voices thing is really creepily good. You need to give it about two minutes of you talking and it can essentially be you talking. It's phenomenally good at it. Um, instruments is interesting. It's currently good with instruments backwards. So for example, you can give it a song and then say, just give me the bass guitar, and it just gives you the bass guitar. It's really good. It's not perfect, but it's good enough if you're trying to learn the bass line of a song, or the drums or whatever. So is that that stems up? Yeah, yeah right. it's phenomenally good at that. Obviously, synthesising instruments, that's not new. We've been doing that for a long, long time. But going backwards is, is what's really interesting. And videos is a whole a whole talk on its own of deep faking videos, like being able to mimic people's facial movements and ticks and things that give away whether it's a real person or not. Um, and obviously, analysing large data sets. Um, 
the, the data that it's got is so phenomenally huge that it's, it's almost like the combined knowledge of all humans isn't big enough to even understand all of that data because it covers such an enormous time period that all of that created context can't be held even by everybody together because we, it's, it's phenomenal, the, the scale of it really. Um, and be able to recognise complex shapes really fast. Um, this has already weirdly been happening, but no one really talks about it because it's a big privacy issue. The facial recognition is already being deployed at scale. So, um, yeah, you can basically track faces through CCTV footage, um, which obviously used to take a long time. It used to take people a long time to go through. That's what happened this weekend with coronation weather. In London. Ah, yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. There's loads and loads of CCTV. And special trucks. Yeah. 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 And they're pre programmed with faces of people they want to yeah. find, and it finds mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Um, you'll see the little white light that goes around the camera. Uh, you used to just see it at airports, now you get treated to that at Tesco's. Mm -hmm. um, they want you to do the checkouts, they know all of you. It's phenomenal. It's, this is why I'm always perplexed why people still give a shit about cookies. When I go and buy potatoes, it's like yeah. what is going yeah. on? Different talk. Um, they can also drive cars better than humans, and the way that they do that is because when one human crashes into a tree, all the other humans laugh. That's the laugh. When one robot crashes into a tree, it tells all other robots, "Don't crash into a tree." So that every mistake they make, they all make and learn together. So they are getting incredibly good. And the other thing is that we've been teaching them all these road signs, mate, and we've been teaching them what is a school bus and what is a coach and other weird ones. Like I had boats on trailers. Mm. That's the other one the other day. So not boats in water, but on trailers. Very specific. Surely one of them's crashed into something. What can't it do? Make decisions based on ethics. There is no universal code of ethics, brackets, yet. Mm -hmm. So it cannot use ethics in its decision-making abilities and cannot guarantee or even affirm accuracy. So it, it can dream, it makes stuff up, it hallucinates, it completely fabricates books, people, events, movies, history. Well, I believe produce accurate Yes, so there you go, that's, that's it, could basically dream. Um, give unbiased responses. AI has been almost entirely, by percentage terms, created by and trained by straight white dudes. So, yeah, so one of the data sets was all the, the links that Redditors had posted on Reddit. Yeah. So actually, just out of interest, how many people here have an active Reddit account? Yeah. Yeah. So proportionally, a lot of what ChatGPT knows is from Reddit. Hmm. It's really odd. Mm -hmm. So that already gives you an understanding of the bias that mm -hmm. it's dealing with. It's not unbiased or familial. It is aware of its own bias if you ask it. If you say, are you aware of the bias you've given me in the previous answer? It says no, because it doesn't understand what the bias is or the weighting of that. And mm -hmm. there's a whole thing around that that needs to be um, done. Oh, and predict the future. It's really bad at it. It's quite funny to ask it, but it just... Like sometimes it will make something up just for fun, but it's based purely on like a novelty as opposed to any form of fact. It can't give you any sources or don't. You know when it um, obviously I guess it doesn't have it's just not thinking this in his head, but he says it can be reliable produce accurate information about people, places or accuracy or but you can you can ask it to give a bunch of arguments for or against something, can you? Mm -hmm. like, yeah, you yeah. Can do that yeah. and it'll list the what one side does, not all this, or every other side does. Mm -hmm. yeah. But a, a couple of examples of where it, it's gone wrong, where I've been using it, is we on the Palin Digital website, we plugged in the little chatbot, mm -hmm. and you can ask it, like, how do I speed up my WordPress website? And it nails it, like, 100% accurately. Mm -hmm. But then you ask it who the, the Palin Digital directors are, and it gets signed for it, but some dude called some John Atherton or something is mm. apparently it's really never heard of him, can be made up. He's in there the other day. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Pizza restaurants. 
So, oh, yeah. so I've done it on a couple of different occasions. Once it gave me a list of 10 pizza restaurants with real addresses in Chichester. Yeah, yeah. But they're all completely made up. Yeah, I tried that until you told me that. It did the same for me, yeah. It's yeah. made up completely. Yeah. But then I did it yesterday and it listed um, Prezzo and ZZ in South Street, but it didn't mention Pizza Express. It's yeah. like, hmm. Well, you know, like, yeah, what I don't get about it is, uh, I told you we were having this conversation before, I asked it to give me a, details of the beaches in Bognor. Yeah. yeah. And it said, oh yeah, you can go, and it's really cool in a way, it does it in a human way, you go to Central Bognor, there's some stalls and stuff, it's a stony beach, uh -huh. or you just go up the Broad, they go to Feltham, there's a cafe there. Yeah. And I said, oh, you missed that Aldwick beach. I went, oh yeah, of course I did. Yeah, it's really. Like, yeah, if you go to the east of Bogner, there's Aldwick beach. And I was like, if it's in the west, I'm like, oh yeah, of course it is. It's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, it's like, I don't, what I understand is, how does it, does it, you know, is, is this sort of, an, this is sort of like, I always think, is this part of this is just like an illusion of, we get creeped out by it all because, it feels like you're talking to a person, but really you're not at all. Mm -hmm. And actually, did, but does it? What I understand is why doesn't it get? Why does it get these things wrong? But actually, it's got all. You keep going about a gigantic data set. It tells you that this, you know, what yeah. pizza restaurants are here, what direction something is. But it can't get it it's, right because it's the la the la large language model. It's been trained on. It's effectively predictive text, but in a stochastic kind of way. So it's like based upon the words that have gone before it, what is most likely to be the next word, the next yeah. word, the next word, the next word, and it keeps going. But it, what's weird though is it, you were saying that you know, liken it to it is better at Google search than you are. Mm. But if you go into Google search and redo it, you would get told that Aldwick Beach is to the west of Bondo. Yes. So why doesn't it know that? But the, the, where it's doing it stochastically, sometimes it might, it might put it in there for somebody else. So, so when you're using these chatbots, is they generally don't output the same information twice because yeah. it's kind of mixing it up based on probabilities. Mm -hmm. You often, you probably do it a few times and it eventually down and start leading with it. Yeah. But yeah, it's not being great at people, places, or yeah, hard facts. Those, those are the, the big weaknesses. Is mm -hmm. is that there's. As, as Ben said, you, you can get it to repeat information it knows, mm. but there's, yeah, places is something it really struggles with. Um, and places are often way more complicated than they seem mm. in yeah. terms of data sets, because you can say, oh, this place is in so-and-so, they start war. You know, like you can, border disputes and things are incredibly yeah. <laughs> delicate issues. And there's like, <clears throat> That's why there aren't emoji flags for some countries, because even the flag is disputed. Yeah. I read this the other day, I was like, what? what? I didn't even realise that. So there's, there's a lot of stuff around data, particularly with people, because there's then the idea of, you see, you can't ask it who is someone and trust what it says, because it might just make it up, if it thinks it's a better answer than reality. Yeah, right. yeah. But then it, it does say, at the bottom of the screen, this will probably just make stuff up if it thinks it's more yeah. interesting than reality, mm. which is a terrible part, but yeah. Um, so we, there's a couple, there's like three more slides and then we'll jump into some questions, but essentially Mo Gordart is, um, as it says, the co-founding officer. So he used to work at Google X and he also made DeepMind, which, or founded DeepMind, and they ran it on YouTube videos. So they basically said, let's look for patterns in YouTube videos. So they made this bit of code that analyzed all the frames in all of the YouTube videos. It's a long time ago, so it didn't, wasn't actually as big a thing as it would be now. And just said, can you find us shapes? And find the most commonly occurring shapes. So it came back and it said, I found this fuzzy disc. And this fuzzy disc comes up all the time. So they said, okay, show us the fuzzy disc. And it was a cat. And it basically just found cats on YouTube videos, but it found every cat in every YouTube video and it was getting really good at it. So they just basically ran it again and again and got it to be more and more refined. And they trained this model on video to do the facial recognition, um, shape recognition. 
that was what Moses sort of first hit Valkman. He's been in it for a long time. Is he the dude who just resigned because he said it's too dangerous? No, right? no, he resigned about ten years ago because he thought it was too dangerous. <laughs> but he founded Deep, and then he basically and these other dudes who resigned with, with the Deep Mind. Yeah, Jeffrey. Yes. Tom. Yeah. Yes. So essentially, Mo. This is a recent post I saw that Mo made. Um, uh, and essentially, it's sort of trying to dampen a bit of the hype mm. to say like AI isn't coming for your job just yet. Mm. You know, if it doesn't even know what all the big beach is, it's not it's not quite ready for <laughs> taking over the job of your accountant. But what he was saying is actually humans who are starting to use AI will outperform those who aren't using AI tools very, very quickly. So I think there's a lot there. Um, the other thing I think is that there's currently a lot of people whose job relies on knowing something and or taking a, a bit of data and doing something to the data and then outputting it. So accountancy being the obvious one, but it's a bit simplistic, but you know what I mean? You're taking numbers, looking at the numbers, making decisions. So essentially what AI will begin by doing is just watching what you do and looking at all the decisions you make. And eventually it will just be able to do what you do quicker then you can do it, not necessarily instead of you, but it'll just do all of that and then go, here's the accounts, what do you reckon? Yeah, it's pretty good. So you'd be managing the exceptions rather than doing the work. Um, case law is another one. There's a lot of solicitors out there whose job it is to go, that sounds like so-and-so versus so-and-so. What's the case law for that? How do we apply it here? Obviously with AI knowing all case law, it can take arguments and cases and evidence and then basically do the job that it would take weeks of solicitors or what do they call them? Legal. There's a paralegal as all of this. Yeah. But essentially all of that level of legal work will just disappear. The problem being the previous slide, it doesn't know facts, it can't use ethics. <laughs> And it has an enormous bias. So it's a terrifying thing, but that doesn't mean it's not coming. Um, so this is uh, the bleakest slide of the whole thing. So essentially AI <laughs> can overtake us and create catastrophic risks for the species. Um, an interesting example of this was someone asked um, ChatGPT how it would solve climate change. And it said, well, there's this little algae that you can add to the sea. And what the little algae does is it grows by absorbing um, carbon dioxide and it makes this formula and it grows in the sea and then fish eat it. So it's going to regenerate the oceans, it will get rid of more carbon dioxide, problem solved. The problem is that in order to make that um, work it needs oxygen so it would also eat all of the oxygen from the atmosphere so it would kill all humans. Uh, and once it's in the sea it's unstoppable. It's one of the weird nature's bioweapons that has just not yet made it to the sea. Terrifying in many ways, but the other thing is that AI knew about it and it suggested that someone dump it in the sea. It's like, seriously, if someone puts it in the sea, it's game over, hilarious. So, you can't trust it without the ethics. Um, AI is used already to create biases and amplify existing ones, <coughs> matter, um, and it basically just fuels the fan of uh, argument and debate and, um, inequality and injustice essentially for monetary gain. So that's already happening, but AI could accelerate that to the point that it becomes really, really bad. Um, AI is already starting to manipulate how people make their decisions, uh, mainly because it's, well, it's built with biases, but also with AI being used from Google Ads point of view. Uh, AI is writing a lot of Google Ads already. It's powering a lot of where they're shown, how they're shown, who they're shown to. So it's already doing that. Um, but I think the key here is that if it does it, there's a fine balance because if it goes too hard, it's going to really hit that lack of trust. And I think as soon as people start to doubt it and mistrust it, it won't be the next big thing anymore. So from the worst to the best, as we said from Mo's slide, if you're using an AI tool, there's a lot of stuff you can do quicker and faster than somebody who doesn't have it. Again, that's going to very quickly separate those who have access to this tech and those who don't. Um, it's also going to separate countries that have access to this tech and countries that don't. And that level of um, foreign policy analysis, all of the things that countries and governments can do 
knowing about other governments and all this sort of stuff. Um, they, they did a study on CAT, uh, CAT scans, uh, MRI scans, and MRI, uh, AI was able to identify more accurately than radiologists in this study, I don't know too much about the details of it, the thing that was wrong in the MRI scan. And it also found lots of other things in the MRI scan that the radiologists had missed because they were looking for this, but they missed that. So in terms of medical advancements of imaging and prescriptions and blood tests and all this sort of analysis stuff, there's definitely some stuff that AI can help with now. Um, environment, uh, environmental sustainability, there's a lot of logistics modelling that goes on with AI, so working out how to drive delivery vans around on shorter routes, how to use less uh, in, you can do incredibly complex folding designs with AI to work out the minimum number of folds needed for packaging and stuff like this. There's loads of cool stuff. You can also work out how to get more materials from where you are to where you need them. Don't send it to the wrong place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, you can't get anything to do to all boot beach. Improve safety and security. Uh, that comes with a strong caveat of depending on who you want to keep you safe and secure. But um, if you trust the people who are keeping you safe and secure, it's probably an improvement. If you don't, it's the other way around. So take that as a will. Um, enhanced creativity and innovation. The opening slide we had up was an AI generated image that we made yesterday. We've been playing around with it this morning. Robots watering flowers on the beach, and it's mm -hmm. just for fun. And it, the images it comes up are incredible. Um, and enhancing learning and one to one tutoring. And this is that, that was literally yeah. a bullet point I added yesterday, having seen the program on the Khan Academy, how they're using their, their own AI mm -hmm. bot uh, but to act as a learning tutor for the students. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't kind of writing the essays for them, it was helping them. Get off the blank page, you know, create ideas, start points. Um, they could ask it questions on books. It was just like, oh my god, if I'd had that when I was at school, I would have, you know, learned so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that was really, really nice to see a good, mm -hmm. you know, AI being used for good. It's yeah. A good example. Yeah. I think the inspiring people to learn more in different ways is a really interesting sort of way of using it, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and then lastly, we thought we'd just share a couple of ways we're using it. Um, we're using it as a good sort of starting point for either content or ideas or how would you do this and just seeing what it comes up with, because sometimes it's thinking in a way that we wouldn't have predicted and that's been quite interesting for either blogs or content or um, yeah, it's amazing what you can ask it just to give you an idea on, and it's like, oh, I haven't thought of that, that's quite interesting. Um, I use a tool called DeepL, so I'm dyslexic, so I can't check anything I've written because my brain doesn't actually read it, it just gets bored and it's like, you've already written this, what are you doing? So I use a tool called DeepL, which is a language tool that improves your writing. So there's lots of rules that they were supposed to teach me at school, but slash I didn't learn about grammar and sentence structure and stuff like this. And it would just get my sentences and say, you've written that long way around, that goes at the beginning and that goes, oh, that does read a lot better. So I use it for writing emails, blog posts. <coughs> I'm using it in quotes and specs as well, just to check um, for yeah. language. Did it write your book? Uh, it wrote the, uh, well, I used it on the intro to the book, yeah. Mm -hmm. I used it on that a lot because I, I, that was quite waffly. And I was just, well, I get to the point. But I, I did use a copy editor for the book because it, it was a lot easier. But I used it on a human copy editor. An actual, an actual <laughs> real, like, person copy editor, yeah. Um, but I would say, I'd say probably at least 50% of the book went through that tool before right. it went to Dave. Yeah, because it's it's just it, it just helps me get the ideas out of my brain quicker. Sure. So it's not actually adding anything, it's just sort of like this this, this tool is just a blank box that you paste what you've written in. Yeah. So you, it, it's not like creating anything, sure. it just and it, there's also a translate version 
so you can then use that same tech to translate into German or nice. Spanish, all these different languages. You said it was all good. It's called Deep L, L. just the letter L. L. Yeah, it's really good. There's, there's like a free version up to so many characters, and then it's like seven euros a month, and you can put like 10,000 characters at a go. So it's, it's really powerful. Anyway, that's why I'm using it for um, that. Um, oh, yeah, so mm. generating ideas for, for paid ads. So the way Google Ads specific, um, Performance Max works now, so it's kind of like all of the different advertising surfaces across Google, YouTube, shopping ads, search ads, display ads, Gmail. You basically feed it like 12 different headlines and four different descriptions. 15 images and then it jumbles them all up and then serves different combinations of them across different platforms and then shows more of the ones that are more successful so you can you can basically say right get me more conversions or get me higher value conversions but the, the tricky bit sometimes is is that because there are very distinct character limits on how many characters you can fit in a headline and a description and you also want a call to action in there it can be you, you could literally sit there for hours trying to trying to shave characters off things without losing the sense, but you can basically pop it into ChatGPT4 and it and it does it for you in like just so quick. So it's been really helpful for that. Um, but then it can also really fuck things up more monstrously. So it's trying to work out how to serve ads in. Um, just in kind of like the locality of Sussex, Hampshire and Surrey and I wanted to exclude all uh, cities other than cities within those three counties so ask ChatGPT, give me a spreadsheet that's the cool thing you can do is actually get it to output a spreadsheet it's like list all the different cities and towns in all of the counties of the UK excluding those in Sussex, Surrey and Hampshire and it did it perfectly except it added the word Brighton to the exclusion cities which, which is like a massive problem because it's exactly where I was kind of trying to type the ads so 99.99% super awesome but that you really do have to place it again isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. places is definitely one of its weak spots yeah. for now yeah because Brighton is not in is, 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 is. It's a council, maybe it doesn't think it's in the county. Don't know, it's an interesting why it skipped that. Because there should be yeah. so many references to it. Yeah, and, yeah it's odd. Mm. I guess one thing we probably let me know is that this is the worst it's ever going to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And 3.5 was, was impressive. Chat GPT version of yeah. 3.5 was impressive. But what they did to really transform it for version four is essentially get humans to kind of do human-based reinforcement learning, which was just telling ChatGPT which of the answers it was outputting were better. So it's like this huge juggernaut shipping container of a boat that was really, really good, but it's kind of heading in the wrong direction. But with the human labeling on that data, it's like, ah, we need to be going this way. And that has been the transformational kind of is, this, is that the paid version where you can get through OpenAI? Um, which version is the free one that you get? So the free, so there's a paid version which gets you version four, but even then if you pay, you don't necessarily get version four as the API connection to plug into other things. You kind of have to persuade them that you are kind of using that. So. We've got 3.5 currently plugged into our website and it's doing a pretty good job but if we once we get that up to version 4 it'd be, mm. be amazing I mean, but. summarizing web pages and documents i've had mixed mixed results with this it'd be interesting to know if anyone in the room's kind of played with it but we we, we were trying to summarize a 128 page pdf and extract the top 10 points and it did it like straight away and then I've tried it subsequently and it's gone up I can't access external links on the internet because I'm a large language model and it's like well you did it last week and you <laughs> seem to do a really good job of it mm -hmm. so it's, it's we don't know whether it's actually not able to access mm -hmm. external links or sometimes it can or did it just literally make it all up but it was so good it was believable 
It's, it's quite a yeah. scary prospect. You can, if you paste the text in, you, it'll do it fine. Yeah. Like I do it with blog posts, so I'll write a blog, yeah. copy the blog, paste it in, and say summarize this in 200 words. Mm -hmm. The summary is bang on, really good. I then put it into my other tool, into DeepL, and that makes it even better. And then that, and then you kind of can adjust it. But like, just for doing that donkey work of actually having to read through and over. I mean, whether you rely on it, I probably wouldn't rely on it too heavily. But for summarizing a blog, it's fine. Do you know what I mean? It's not. So, ideas for content. This is a really good one. You can say. Uh, give me 10 questions that people might ask, or give me 10 questions that business owners might ask a web agency about building a website. Yeah, four of them are pretty good. Five of them are pretty good. I like that. Off we go with some content. But you can give it the context of who's asking who, and that really changes. If you say that children might ask dogs, for example, it still comes up with stuff. It's like you can be really wacky with it. And, it comes yeah, up with some incredible questions. Well, we have done some good strap lines with this. Oh, yeah. nice. Just sort of like, give you a few ideas and strap lines for this. Just, you know, we're promoting this, it's aimed at these people. Mm. And it comes up with some quite half decent ones. You know? yeah. At least stuff that points you in the right direction. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. I think that's the key, is it's really good at just getting you, ah, it's like a, yeah. that's a great idea. I like that. I've developed that. Yeah, it's quite, yeah, where it falls down on sort of facts, it's quite, it is sort of quite crazy, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Really. But I think that's the probably the, the the way because the way it's getting to the result is different than the human brain would get to the result. It's wired in a different way. It's sort of connected. It in, intrinsic it built into it almost is the yeah. fact that it will use a creative solution to get there because it's not using a linear thought process yeah. that we would use maybe. I've had it writing poetry and comedy sketches. <laughs> Absolutely yeah, incredible. You say what style of comedy what about a dog wow. eating a donut? Yeah, it's the whole scene and it's like barely <laughs> half funny. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, I enjoy that. Yeah. Had it writing uh, Julia Donaldson books for the girls, nice. but putting them into the story <laughs> oh, and, and the cats and yeah. everything. Do it in the rhyming style of Julia Donaldson. Yeah. That's great. Really really that's 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 getting to write you there because they're quite yeah. simple books, those. So she can just put the go, pump me out five new books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm sure the <laughs> well. must be uh... Well then then you could use that Firefly, the good, uh, Adobe Firefly, but then make the illustrations sort of. Yeah. You just give it the prompt from the page and illustrate yeah. it as well. Well there, there was a point. Point. this one, let's at the end of this session, we're gonna go and make videos. <laughs> AI books. Um, explaining code. This is really interesting. Yeah. You can paste in some code and say, what does this do? And it'll tell you what it's doing. Similarly, you can then say, can you adjust it so it also does this? Can you fix it so that the, let's say you give it the code from a button on a web page. Can you make the button this much wider, this colour? Sure. And then it outputs the code you can put back in. Mm -hmm. And it's really good at it. Mm -hmm. um, Apart yeah. from the, the spider chasing the fly that I made. So I asked it to make a spider on a web, make a web, and then chase a fly around the screen. Um, but it created the spider with just four legs. And I, spiders have eight legs, and it's like, oh, of course they do. Sorry about that. And re redid the code. So again, some yeah. it does some really stupid errors. Yeah, you should always check with the web developer. What is the what is the, I only tried to explain it earlier. Do you know what? Was it? Well, just why it gets the it's like it can do all these super complicated things, but it doesn't know that a spider's got eight legs. Yes, this doesn't make any well, sense. Well, that's AGI, <clears throat> that's the thing. Yeah. Like with artificial intelligence, it's just connections, it's yeah. it's it's like it's got very distinct skills, yeah. and it's only once but it combines with other it's not context. So, you're not so you say that there's an anomaly AI that we're using in chat GPT, so it's not looking stuff up. No. No, it's predicting the next one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It, I think it's actually, it, if you know how the images are, are made, mm -hmm. it starts off with noise yeah. and then it, it, it kind of adds an image to it. It gets as close as it can each iteration. It's like that, but with words. Yeah. So it's trying to find words that belong next to each other based on the data sets, yeah. which is why I can get East and West mixed up because mm -hmm. 
the data sets probably have as much east as much west. Yeah. Yeah. But also it has no context, like it just knows that Aldwick is a word, it doesn't know it's a place. It just knows that it's often mentioned when it's mentioned in the same sentence as this place. But it's it only context. There's, there's, so the analogy of it being Google search isn't really that accurate then. So Google, so Google search is different in the sense that that is an AI. That's a whole, I mean it is AI. But those are people that you said at the beginning, <laughs> Yeah, the other I don't know, like if I well, just a quick Google search, but it actually isn't, is it? It's, it works completely mm -hmm. differently. Now. Yes, it does. Yeah. Well, Google is a massive AI thing, it just has yeah. lots of context, yeah. but it has no creativity. Yeah. So, the aid that kind of general intelligence will come when you get the creativity of ChatGPT, you know, like the creativity of, let's say, Dali or Midjourney, mm -hmm. those image making things, and the context of Google and the spatial awareness of yeah. the driving and the physical location of the data of the maps, imagine combine all of that together, you've got something that is to all intensive purposes as good as a human, probably yeah. better than a human in pretty much everything it can do, yeah. but it can't move or physically adjust yeah. until of course it can move yeah. and adjust things <laughs> like doors and yeah. do you know what I mean? It's like my friend's cat for we can learn how to open doors and that has changed her entire <laughs> life. So you wait until ChatGPT can actually walk into a room and have a conversation with you. That's well, a different, what I do is different level. into a Boston Dynamics room. Right? Exactly. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Have you um, have you used Bard much? Because I, I have. So. We have used Bard because we use Google Workspace, and you are prohibited from using yeah. the, the, the paid version of Google. You're not allowed to use it. Right. So we I applied, but they were like, no, because you. you what you've paid for comes with a warranty sort of thing, so yeah. you can't use that. But yeah. what have you? Have you I have no, no, I've got the same thing because I've got Google Works, it's not something that has got accounts and I've got all access to it, but I haven't really. I've um, heard it's, it much. yeah, I've heard what it's really useful for is that compared to ChatGPT, the, la the language model is based on up to September 21, mm -hmm. right? Whereas BARD is up to date, up to date yeah. yeah, so that. Can be a bit more useful because yeah, I was wondering about the context thing about mm -hmm. if they've managed to pull some of these because they've now got ChatGPT quite a big haven't they as well. Yeah, so I get getting haven't played that. So it's all about <laughs> <laughs> that. That was a real game changer in, in search. Yeah, to have an AI kind of generative <coughs> prompt happening at the same time as the search yeah, results because yeah, yeah. it's very often better just to have the answer. Yeah. Than to have to scroll through yeah. four ads, yeah. ten <laughs> organic results. Yeah. 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 You know that are ranked based on how spammy and SEO optimized it is. It's, yeah. it's um, so we're both using generative kind of AI plugins for our web browsers now. Mm, right. There's yeah. a thing called Neva, which is called N E E V A, and it does two things. One, it blocks ads, which is a glorious web experience. Quite ironic, considering who yeah. developed it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's one of the guys who is the founder of Google Ads. With a Google Equip. And you would know best how to block Absolutely, it. yeah. So, this little plug in you add to your browser, and it basically becomes a Google search engine. But essentially, it has a, an AI response to your search query. So, if you just query a brand, it just says, Where's the website? What more do you want to know? But if you say, if you ask a question like you'd ask ChatGPT, it gives you an answer from web results only. It's not using large language models to like be creative, but it is that it's that other thing we're talking about context. Mm -hmm. So it will say, Here is my response, and it has the little numbers like in books. So it's like, Here are the six sources I use to generate this. Mm -hmm. So if you say, What's the best WordPress plugin for speeding up my website? it will say, There are many like WordPress plugins, blah, 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 blah. here are the six best, blah, 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 blah. and it will tell you where it found it. And it's like, normally that's like trawling through about six spam laden, click heavy blogs and nonsense. And it's done all of that for you, which is giving you the answer. So I think in terms of what it's going to disrupt in search is fascinating. Mm. That's what a lot of people want chat to be to do. Yeah. 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 It's actually, it's like a bit like expressing with his features. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not perfect, neither by any sense of the word, but it's interesting and it's very different. And I find for most of what I Google at work, it's actually way quicker than using Google because yeah. I don't have to go to ten blogs to find the answer. It just tells me the answer. No, I mean, in Google search, eventually, right? Mm -hmm. No, 
because Google make more money from distracting. Because remember, <laughs> a blog with lots of display ads on, Google makes money on. So the results are prioritized yeah. based on how much money they're going to make from the page you go to. So if you don't go to the page, they don't make the money. But then if someone else makes it, then when people stop using Google, then everything they've got. Imagine a world. <laughs> it seems like that could be the end of, of websites, right? It's the way that you're it, sort of collecting, or, this, or sort yeah. of getting data yeah, yeah. is not yeah. visiting something, it's asking something. Yeah, so, yeah. so it makes you wonder if in the future it's instead of creating a website, you're really just injecting data into the, the yeah. consciousness for yeah. it to then, you know. Well, that's kind of what me and Ben have been thinking about in terms of some of the ways that web data is marked up, for example. Quick Q and A questions mm. and answer pages at the moment are very popular with Google because it can grab your answer and give it as the answer. But you still have to make those pages kind of human friendly in case someone clicks it. Mm. But actually, if we flip the idea of the website on its head and actually the website is essentially just having a data feed out the back of it yeah. with a whole load of marked up data, which is just for AI, mm. then there's a it's a really interesting thing like does anybody need to go to the website in order to get what you're get the value of what you're trying to deliver it's, especially if it's giving its source if it doesn't give the source then obviously it's not meaningless but if it's saying i found this because i don't write a blog about it yeah like, oh cool okay i wonder, wonder if they know anything more about sure. what i'm interested in but yeah it's interesting to think like mm. how much of your website has ever been read by humans no, I was, I was watching a TED talk this morning. It was an ex Apple designer of twenty years, and his new hardware is it's a little thing that sits in your pocket and it just looks at the world like you do, mm. and it's a screenless, so it's an AI based UI essentially, um, but it absorbs everything that you hear and see and sort of generates that context. And then when it needs to, it can project using a laser onto your hand, so you just hold your hand up and it the stuff's there and then when you take your hand away it's gone. And that actually exists, like this is yeah. coming out like this year, next year. Wow. What does it actually do though? It's it's just like a replacement for for your phone. So they see it as a remedy to too many screens. So they're going screenless. Hmm. That's what they're what was it got to do with all the stuff they say is looking or you you're looking at and everything what? I just I guess so it can build context about your life, you know, so if you ask it a question you know, it has um, a record of every conversation yeah. you have. Where did I put this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Put it under there. Maybe just project a little <laughs> circle in the room, that's what it is. So, <laughs> have you read the circle? Because that's essentially the device that's they have in the circle, which is really interesting. That's what I'm it reminded me of her as well, that film yes. where yeah. in love with the oh, same yeah. sort of thing. It's brilliant. Mm. It's such a good film. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, so I think pretty much that is where we're at. Oh, FN's. <laughs> yes. This, this is so bad at the moment, the potholes. It's crazy yeah, right. how bad the roads are. So, with my trusty GPT-4 lawyer, <laughs> we have uh, It's brilliant because it's... I'm like, right, can you help me act? I see the prompt was act as a lawyer on my behalf. <laughs> Pothole damage. And it's like, right, give me the evidence. When did it happen? What was the conditions? That's incredible. That's it's just so good at it. And then the, the prompts you just copy and paste into the council's form. Mm -hmm. It looks like you've got a really expensive lawyer <laughs> doing it for you. <laughs> you can hook that up to like an accelerometer in your car, and every time it detects like a judge, <laughs> yeah. it just submits a claim <laughs> yeah. as you're driving. <laughs> so there's also one I found, I can't remember the name of the top of my head, I can look it up if anyone's interested, but you essentially put terms and conditions documents in and then summarises it in human readable bullet points. So it's really good for, and it's designed to find catch clauses. Sort of say, you're agreeing to do this, they're agreeing to do that, they're going to absolutely sting you if you do this, this and this, you owe them money if this, this, this. And it's like, and they're going to sell all this data, and it just, it's really interesting to put in what, what, you're, what you think a contract is and then what it actually gets out. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't remember the name of it. I did, I'll, I'll look it up in my um, history if anyone wants to know more about it. It's a really mm -hmm. clever one. But I think that's where this sort of thing is going to really help people with doing tasks that might... Well, as we said earlier, knowing things mm -hmm. and applying knowledge to that thing is going to become a job that can be automated incredibly quickly. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, well, we've kind of got to the end of the hour without even really trying. <laughs> um, 
So, oops, I thought I was going to take 10 minutes. That bit. <laughs> well, we kind of did the questions for us. Um, so, I mean, is any, what do we do? Has anybody got any, any major, like, oh my god moments or thoughts that have sort of jumped out that we want to share? Well, funny that we're, we're using it quite like, in all sorts of Bella's done voice synthesis, we've done image generation for ads. Um, what else? Well, the, this last one, um, I had to do a whole ad, um, and um, I kind of wanted to create this sort of, well, I needed to cut out the subject of, the, of the, these, you know, like eight videos or so. Um, and I just put it through, you know, this runway, an app, wow. where I was just asking, it's just cut, you know, cut all these people out. Uh, I don't want any background. Um, and he did the whole thing in about yeah, half an hour or so. Something that would take me, you know, like two weeks to. And I was also telling people that I got accepted uh, yesterday this new app called uh, Wonder Dynamics. So it replaces um, footage um, for a 3D object that you have. So, for example, if I'm feeling, filming Pete here, um, I can feed a 3D object of a dog, and you'll put a dog like in this in this position, uh, and it face is face tracking as well, oh, like, wow. and yeah. rigging everything, um, and that's going to you know re revolutionize the the Hollywood industry, film industry, yeah, because you know something like that will take you you know six months to do. And they do frame really by frame, do not they? Yeah, yeah. And now you'll be able to do the whole thing in like 15 minutes. You're starting, starting to see that kind of text and video as well, which I think is amazing. You know, um, oh, yeah, create a, a, yeah, a yeah. pizza advert, and it's like somehow oh, generating yeah. stuff. I mean, it's oh, kind yeah. of sketchy, but you can see where it's going. And in five years, you know, you have film students generating scripts, you know, or plays, and then like feeding that in, and it'll just spit out a video file. I mean, it's what, what I find amazing is we, we live in a world where you have like two or three percent of people are content creators. You, you know, they can actually generate music mm. or whatever. And that's just gonna be like 95% mm. soon. And mm. what that will mean, the, the artist Grimes, she says that you can use her voice to make any music you want mm. and she'll only take 50% royalties for it. And she tweeted last night, she's like, I'm kind of annoyed that what I'm hearing is like better than my music that I can oh, yeah. make, you know? Amazing, it's crazy. That's so fun. Reading about a thing where you can describe a room in text and it will make a 3D CAD model and rendering on that room <laughs> from text. And what this means for, well, for sort of architectural rendering is that it's a lot quicker to mock up things just as ideas that you started. But also in terms of games, it's really interesting because it means you can essentially make a game that's different every time you play it. Mm. Because all you do is give it the text prompts for the world mm. that you're going into, the rooms or the yeah. that <coughs> landscapes you're going into, and then let the AI generate it every time. So everyone's played experience of the game would be different because it's just using these incredibly weird and wonderful text prompts mm. um, to generate stuff on the fly, mm. which I thought was quite curious and again creative way. I think that's so far it just seems to be really good at coming up with. Odd disconnect. That's really a, a massive highway stuff. That's almost a very good Yeah, yeah. But then again, think of all the time you've saved by not having to read that document to do this. Yeah. But you, you can instantly fill all of that save time yeah. by making photos yeah. of robots watering flowers on the beach. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's really good. Um, cool, well, thanks very much. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.